Hello everyone, I hope you guys are doing great. In this video, we are going to learn about surface-based coupling constraint in Abacus. This video is going to be related to this blog post from my blog Learn FEA. And I'm going to let the link to this blog post in the video description. And here we have the theoretical part about coupling constraint. And in this video, we are going to learn about the practical part. That is, we are going to open up Abacus and uh, create a model in which we are going to use a coupling constraint. Um, so in this blog post, here we have the types of coupling, kinematic and distributing. The kinematic is a rigid one and the distributing is, a, is one that distributes the load between the nodes that are part of the coupling. Here we have some applications, and the first one is um, uh, to apply loads and boundary conditions. In Abacus, we are going to create this simple model to practice. And in this model, we have a kinematic coupling and a rotational um, a rotation applied to the reference node. And um, we are going to, to create this model shortly. And uh, the, here, we, here we have an animation of what happens. And in this coupling, we have the uh, radial degree of freedom uh, free. Um, we are going to, 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 to create this model uh, later, so you're going to understand better about it. And uh, second application is uh, to distribute loads in a model. And uh, here we have a, um, another example that we are going to model in Abacus. Here we are using a distributing coupling and also uh, a rotation applied to the reference node. And uh, when we use, and this is an opened hoop, and uh, when we use a distributing coupling, this uh, tube is allowed to warp. And then we are going to, to have something like this when we apply a rotation. Okay, this is warping. And also we have some other applications. So I recommend you to read this blog post before you watch this video. I'm not going to, to talk about every detail that we have here. Okay. Also we have, um, uh, I have put here this example, the example of a ball joint connection. In this example, we have many uh, couplings uh, that needs to be defined for this type of joint to work. And also one that is, that is very interesting here is uh, when we need to model bolt pretension, uh, we need to use couplings. We need to use one coupling for the nut and another coupling for the bolt and then connect the reference nodes using a translator connector. I have a blog post that can be accessed through this link that we have here that talks about uh, bolt pretension techniques in Abacus. And one of these techniques are is the one that I just explained. Okay, so if you want to learn more about it, you can uh, click on this link. And then here um, we have this blog post and also we have a video of me teaching how to model uh, the bolt pretension in Abacus. Okay. All right, um, and also here we have uh, um, uh, what is a node-based surface, element-based surface. We are going to see this in our model. And also weighting methods for distributing constraints. We have linearly decreasing weight distribution. And um, anyways, I have everything explained here. This is not so much used actually. We usually use the standard option that is when we have the load distributed uniformly. Also, we can specify a local coordinate system for the for, for the coupling definition. And we are going to do it in Abacus, actually, because um, this first example, for this first example, we need to create a cylindrical cylindrical coordinate system. Uh, in, in a way that we are going to have the uh, radial degree of freedom free. 
for the coupling nodes. Okay, so we can define a local coordinate system for the coupling, or we can simply use the global coordinate system, which is uh, usually the case. Okay. Um, uh, we can also have continuum coupling, uh, coupling method and the structural coupling method. There are some subtle differences, but usually we use the continuum coupling method. And uh, we have some limitations and best practices and everything. Okay. And uh, here I have also put a case study that is the bulge, bulge, bulge joint connection. I thought about uh, creating a video of um, about how to create this model, but this video would be too long. So I decided to create uh, in this video a, a model that is simpler. But let me know if you'd like to know how to create this model right here. Okay. Um, you can comment here at the end of the blog post. You can leave a reply and tell me if you if you'd like to know how to model this uh, this this model here. Okay. So in this model, we have. Um, let me take a screenshot of it. Um, and let me open it here. Okay. So you see that we let me get red. We have this part. This is named as bolstered. Okay, we have this part. We usually have a nut here. And uh, this is one part that is being connected by, by this ball joint. And this is the other part that is being connected. This other part needs to have a housing for the bolstered. And uh, here in this model, we need to define a coupling for the bolstered nodes in this region and also for the uh, housing nodes, uh, nodes that we have in, in this inner surface here. And then we connect the reference nodes of each coupling using a connector such as an, a, a weld connector. And then we have the connection in the bolstered. Okay. So this is uh, one way you can use the uh, couplings and i personally use uh i i build models like this a lot because i work with front suspension of heavy vehicles and uh we can find this type of uh, of connection in front and rear suspension of every type of vehicle okay so in this image you can see that we have the knuckle that connect for example to the upper control arm and here we have a ball joint connection. You see how this is. So we have the bolstered, we have the nut, we have the housing, and everything. Okay, this is a very common type of connection. And we should use couplings to, to create it. All right, um, now let's create this module right here let me take a screenshot of it and uh, let's let me explain what we are going to do here let me paste it here and drag it down okay so here we are simply going to create a tube like this and then uh, we are going to do, to select uh, select the nodes that are part of this surface to be the coupling nodes and then the reference node for this coupling will be this one and then we are going to create a kinematic coupling a kinematic coupling creates a rigid connection between the reference node and the coupling nodes that are in the surface that we are going to select Okay, so here we have the constrained nodes that are free to translate radially. And uh, this is another detail that I need to explain. In this example, we are going to create um, a kinematic coupling without constraining radial motion. 
Okay, I'm going to show how to do that shortly. And for that, we will need to create a cylindrical coordinate system. We the uh, and then we are going to have the radial coordinate uh, direction, and this radial coordinate direction will be free in this coupling. And in this way, when we apply uh, we when we apply a rotation about the axis of this tube to this reference node, this rotation will be transferred to the coupling nodes that are positioned in this surface. And uh, but these nodes will be free to translate in the radial direction. And this is the result. You see that the nodes translate uh, actually rotate, but um, it's free to uh, move in the radial direction. And in that way, uh, you see that the radial direction increases when we rotate this tube. Okay, so let's build this model. First thing I want to do is to create... Let me delete... Close it. First thing I need to do is to create a folder in my desktop. And um, let me name it as... Um, so this is the kinematic coupling sample. Let me open it. And now, let me close that because let me open it again. So um, search for Abacus CAE and open the app and then select with the standard explicit module. And uh, here, the first thing I want to do is to go to file set work directory and then get the path to this folder that we created control c and then control v here okay now everything that every file that is generated in this module is saved in this folder in the working folder now we just need to create um this tube so go to parts double click on part and then I'm going to name this part as tube, 3D, deformable, and solid extrusion. Continue. Get the circle tool. Position the mouse in the region. Click on it. And then create a circle like this. Um, create another circle like this. And now uh, click on um, add dimension. Select the circle and define a radius of 30 millimeter. And then uh, now this circle, you can define the radius to be equal to maybe 40 millimeters. Okay. Um, all right. Now, actually, one thing that I want to do is to uh, um, let me create a construction line, select this tool, and then uh, from this point to this, and then go to Add Constraint, Horizontal, and then select this line. Okay. Um, now, Let's again create a construction line from the origin to this point and then add constraint horizontal and select this line. Okay, this is important for us to generate a mesh that is organized like the one shown here. Okay, now we can um, click on ask, or actually press ask, and then click on done here. And then the, the depth of this tube will be maybe 50 millimeters. Click, click on OK, and there we have it. I guess I want it to be uh, longer. So click on parts, tube, Features, double click on solid extrude, and let's define here 100. Apply, 
Okay, yeah, that's better. Now here on tube mesh, double click on mesh. Let's seed it, seed part. Uh, let's ac accept the default value, apply. Okay, now click on assign mesh controls. I want exahedrons for this mesh. Okay, that's already selected. You see X, it's already se selected. And now let's go to assign element type and then uh, standard library, 3D stress. We can use linear elements, that's okay, because exahedrons, e linear elements are, are good. Um, and uh, reduced integration. Uh, we can use it reduce integration that's that's okay um click on okay and then click on mesh part yes okay this is not exactly the way i want it um let me think what we can do here to improve it what we can do here maybe is to create a partition a partition cell Okay, and um, let's see from normal and normal to edge. No, three points. Yeah, maybe three points. And then uh, let's select three points to define a plan where we want to create a partition. This one, this one, and this one. Create partition. Okay, now we have splitted this tube in two parts. And these hopefully will help us to create a battery mesh. It's splitted, but uh, the mesh will be continuous, so uh, it will not affect the behavior of the tube. Now let's try to see it again. Okay, apply, okay. And then mesh, okay. Now we have what we wanted. Um, so you see that even though we have we have uh, partitioned the tube in two regions, uh, uh, the mesh is uh, the mesh is continuous. So we have um, a continuous tube. Okay, this partition tool is used uh, usually to help us to generate a more organized mesh. All right. Um, so the mesh is ready. The next thing I want to do is to create a material. So double click on materials. We can name it as steel. And then uh, let's assign a mechanical property, elasticity, elastic. And then we should define the Young's modulus. Here we are going to work in uh, megapascal, millimeters, newton. And uh, this is the these are the units that we are going to work. Let's remember that in Abacus we should select a set of units that are consistent okay you can search on google abacus units table to see the sets of units that you 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 have available let's use si um, set of units and here we should define an mpa so this is going to be a standard steel and uh, usually the Young's modulus of a standard standard steel is 200 gigapascal and therefore it is equal to 200,000 mpa and Poisson's ratio is usually about 0.3 okay these are the only mechanical properties that we need to define for a linear material material we, we don't need to define anything uh, unless we wanted to to have a stress strain curve for the plastic deformations but that's not the case for this example. Click on OK. And now we have the material defined. Next thing I want to create is a section. Double click on sections and uh, let the standard name homogeneous solid. OK, continue. And let's select the material we just created. Click on OK. And now we need to assign this section to this tube. To do that, we can go to the property module and then we have this tool assign section uh, deactivate create set there is no need to create set select everything done and then select the section we've just created okay 
And there we have it. Okay, now this software have the geometry discretized, that is the mesh created, the material defined. This is a, an isotropic homogeneous material. Now we need to create an instance, go to assembly, double click on instances, and then select tube. Okay, and then we have the instance created. In Abacus, we should always, always create an instance. This is usually useful when we, we have more than one part and then we need to create an assembly of many parts. But this does not, this does not make any sense when we have just one part. But we need to create it anyways. All right. So, um, I guess um, next part, next step is to create the couplings. Um, let's create uh, to create the couplings here in Abacus. We should go to interaction module, and then here we have this option: create constraint. Uh, but before we do this, we need to create a reference point to be used as our reference node. If we go back to this image, I'm talking about this orange node, couplings reference node. Okay, so let's create this reference point. Firstly, we need to create uh, uh, a point. Let's use this tool here, create datum point. Uh, click, uh, click on it with the left mouse button and hold until you see these options and then select uh, offset from point. And then select this point right in the middle. And I want to offset it in our global Z direction. So here I have the three components that I can offset and I want to offset in the Z direction. So I should uh, define here this third uh, coordinate to be, for example, um, 15 and press enter. And then to rotate the view, you can use Ctrl plus Alt and left mouse button. And then you see that we have our point created here. Now I need to create a reference point on this point. And to do that, I can use this tool, create reference point. Select it and click on this point. And now we have RP1. Okay, um, now we can create the coupling. And in this case, I'm going to create a coupling on this side and also on the back side. Okay, actually, yeah, I can do that or I can simply fix the displacement of the nodes that are part of this surface. All right, so to create the coupling, click on Create Constraint. And then, um, and then we can give it a name. Um, I'm just going to let uh, the name as Constraint 1. And then here, here we need to select Coupling. You see that we have many types of constraint. Okay. And uh, the one that I want now is coupling. Continue. And then it says select the constraint control points. And uh, it's this point right here, RP1. Done. And then select the constraint region type. And this is related to this part of the blog post. Let me search for it. Uh, Node-based surface and element-based surface. Okay, so now this part is very important, guys. Uh, if we select here surface, it's going to be a element-based surface. And if I select here node region, it's going to be a node-based surface. And uh, to be honest, this doesn't not this doesn't make any much difference most of the time. There is an explanation of uh, the difference between these two here, and also in the Abacus user's guide. And you can look at that. There is like uh, an explanation of how the loads are distributed and everything. Uh, 
but it does not make much of a difference. Let's select here, for example, surface, and then select this surface, hold the shift button, and then select also this one. And now click on done. And now we have to, so you see that this window pops up and then we have the name of the coupling, the type, which is coupling, control point picked, that is this one that we picked, surface picked, that is this pink surface that we've selected. And here we have the constrained degrees of freedom. So U1, U2 and U3 are the translational degrees of freedom. And U R one, U R two, and U R three are the rotational degrees of freedom. Um, the solid elements does not have rotational degrees of freedom, so it doesn't make any difference if I select it or not. Okay, uh, just uh, the shell elements and the beam elements have de uh, rotational degrees of freedom. Now the translational degrees of freedom uh are related to the global coordinate system for these nodes we need to change that um because in this exercise i want to to let the radial degree of freedom free but i can't do it in the using the global coordinate system so here i will need to actually click on create datum coordinate system instead of using the global. So click on it, and then we can give it a name such as, um, this is going to be a cylindrical coordinate system, and then select cylindrical, continue. And then it says, select a point to be the region. We could select this point. And then select a point to be on the R axis, that is the radius axis. We can select this point. And, then, and also it asks us to select a, uh, a point to be in the R theta plane, that is the tangential, tangential direction. We don't need to select this point. It's going to be selected automatically if we don't select it. So we can simply create, uh, click on create datum and then close this. And now here we should go and click on edit, select this new coordinate system that was created. And then there we have it, cylindrical CYS. Okay. And uh, just one thing here, you see that we have an, influ an influence radius that can be specified. And this is also explained in this blog post. And uh, to be honest, it's not so used. Uh, it's not usually used. But this is something that we can define. Basically, if if we define it, uh, there is like uh, a radius, uh, an influence, a sphere around the reference point in which the nodes are going to be selected for the coupling. Okay. Um, okay. So now we have it ready to go so we can click on okay or oh, actually there is one thing that i forgot that is to let the uh the radial degree of freedom free okay so to do that uh let me go to constraint manager and then we have this constraint click on edit and the Radi the radial degree of freedom is the U1 in this case. Okay, for cylindrical coordinate systems, the radial degree of freedom is the U1. Or, oh, sorry, I should let everything selected but U1. Okay, in that way, we are not going to be constraining the radial degree of freedom of the nodes on this surface. They are going to be free to translate and then click on OK. And you see th how is the representation of the coupling when we have it defined by a surface. The, these lines are coming from the facets of the elements that are in on the surface. If we go to edit again, 
and you see we have here the surface peaked click on it to edit and now click on node region and then select again this surface hold the shift button and select this surface done and click on ok you see that now the representation of the coupling is a little different these lines are coming from the, some of the nodes that are part of the surface okay and uh, the differences are not so so considerable let's let's keep it as as is now and uh okay we can close this and now we can create another coupling here let's do this click on create constraint coupling continue oh actually i need to create a reference point before so click on rp select this point this time i'm not going to offset this point backwards i'm going to keep it there and uh, now create constraint, continue, select RP2, done, surface, select this one, hold shift and select this one, done. And then for this one, I'm going to constrain, um, I'm going to also let the, actually I'm going to constrain all degrees of freedom. And it could be kinematic. And let's click on, okay. All right. Now let's create the steps and apply boundary conditions. In the initial step, you see that we have already a, an initial step created automatically. In this initial step, we just apply boundary conditions to prevent rigid body motion. And therefore, we are going to just fix all, the, uh, all degrees of freedom of the reference node of this coupling. Because I'm going to apply the rotation, the, uh, the rotation at this node. Okay, so to create this boundary condition on this initial step, double click on BCs, and I want a, this first option is okay. Continue, select this node, done, and I'm going to encastre. That is, I'm going to make all degrees of freedom equal to zero, and then click on okay. And now we have our tube fixed. After fixing our tube, we can apply um, uh, any type of load at this node. Um, so let's do that. For these, I need to create another step. So double click on step, and then let's name it as load step, and then continue. And then uh, here we can let, let uh, large deflection large displacements off we don't need to do anything here let's click on ok and here we have our step created and um, here i'm going to apply we could apply a torsional moment for this load or we also can apply uh, a tor uh, rotational displacement i'm going to apply a rotational displacement and for that I need to click on double click on BCs or I can even go to module load and you see that load step is uh, highlighted so if I create a boundary condition it's going to be created for this step and uh, click on create boundary condition displacement rotation continue select this node done and here I want so let's see the global coordinate system we have the z axis as the axial direction of this tube and therefore we need to apply a rotation about the z axis that is ur3 and here in radians so let's think about it so 3.14 is 360 degrees if we um want to let's say that we want to rotate it by 3.6 degrees we need to divide it by 100 and then uh if we apply here 
0 0.0314. We are going to rotate this node about the Z axis by 3.6 degrees, hopefully. Okay, so I think this is a good rotation for us to see the effect. And then click on OK. And you see the representation of a rotational degree of uh, rotational boundary condition. It has two arrows to show that this is a rotation. And you should use the right hand rule to see the direction of this rotation. Um, okay, I think everything is. I, I guess everything is ready to go. We can simply go to job, trade job, create, okay, job manager, and submit. And then the solver will uh, solve this mathematical module. It's going to evaluate the stiffness matrix of each element, assemble the global stiffness matrix, reduce it by applying boundary conditions, and solving for the active displacements. And then after that, we can post-process the results. And then you see it's completed. We can go to results. And here we have it. Uh, click on plot deformed shape and you see what happens. Uh, we can even go to op options, common, and deformation scale factor. We can apply, apply uniform and increase it to maybe 20 okay and it's going to exaggerate the displacement okay so this is exactly what happens in that animation video that i put in the blog post so you see that the nodes selected for the coupling are free to translate in the radial direction and this is what happens when um we do it okay now um i'm going to actually show I, i'm going to only actually show this module because the other module uh, the strategy to build it is very similar so as a task for you i want you to build this module right here the difference is that the tube should be opened the coupling should be a distributing coupling right if i go back to interaction and uh, constraint manager i have this coupling right here for example and edit if i want a so you see that we have these three options continuum distributing structural distributing and kinematic um, these are the two the two most used options kinematic and continuum distributing to be honest i almost not don't use the structural distributing but I have explained here what it means, the structural distributing. Okay, uh, so to build this model, you should use a continuum distributing coupling, and uh, we sh you should apply a rotation to the reference node as just like we did here. And um, what else? Also, one thing that you should uh, you should do is uh, on this. So here we have our module, right? On this back surface, you should also create a distributing coupling. So you should create a distributing coupling on this back surface and on this front surface. On this back surface, you should fix the displacement of the reference node, just like we just like as we did here, and on this first surface coupling you should apply the rotation about the axis and then we are going to you're going to see something like this happening okay all right and okay i guess i'm finished so if you want to so you see that to show how to model a very simple uh, model it takes a long time so this video is like 30 minutes long more than that I imagine then how long it would take for me to show you guys how to uh, create this model right here um, but if you'd like to 
you can tell me by um, leaving a reply here. Okay, and also uh, don't forget to sign up for my FEA newsletter. Um, here I send you emails uh, related to FEA. So if you're interested, you can subscribe. And okay, I think I'm done. I showed everything that, that I wanted. I hope you guys liked it and see you in the next video.